Hi, welcome to part two of the reassembling of the mechanism from a Mills Wire Bandit. Albeit three years late, we did a part one where we had a total strip down of a mechanism, every nut and bolt, we rebuilt it and we got to a stage of, as we are now, fitting a real bundle and the braking system and the timing. If you haven't checked out part one, then do so now. It's on our YouTube channel or visit the website slotmachinedepot.co.uk. So without further ado, let's continue where we left off from part one of the reassembler. So here's the mechanism that we're working on. move all this out. Here's the real bundle that we're actually going to be putting on. Um, it's a bit of a state. Probably will replace the real strips and check out whether or not the payout discs on the side match the symbols on here. I've got no idea as this machine came into us non-working anyway. And uh, we'll come back to that. So the first thing we're going to do is put the brakes on. Now the brakes go here at the front. So I've got the three brake arms which are like this. These do go in sequence so if ever you take these off make sure you number them from left to right one two three uh, because they do go in a certain way and the reason being is it's these fall into position one two and three and it's done by this timing lever bar which is just here that's this is this lever here that moves when you play it comes forward and then backwards and when it rolls backwards it's this little foot of the brake arm that slips off of that and causes it to drop forward and lock into the cog so the first thing I'm going to do is put on the first brake, push the spindle rod through the side here. And you can see that's how it fits. Now if we take a look here, and zoom in onto this, you can see when the arm's on here, when you pull the arm of the mechanism, this main operating lever bar here lifts upwards and in doing so it lifts the brake off of the cog of the reel so it moves it backwards out of the way or forward in this case like that. Okay, so it moves it off of the cog so the reels can spin and then it drops back into place like that. So that's done by this. So let's put the first one on. There's then a, a small spacer that goes on here. Now you can put a little bit of 3-in-1 um, oil on here. It doesn't have to be too lubricated, you just want these brakes to be able to move freely, they haven't got to be too loose. We put the second brake on. The third brake arm, this one is similar to the first two. On some mechanisms you'll find, and we'll show you a picture, that you have a arm that comes out of the side here so you, that acts as a spacer so you wouldn't have this spacer here okay but this one hasn't so this is going to go on here so what we have at the front here is a small hole uh, and you're going to put a split pin through there and that will lock this bar in position and stop it from coming out so I'm going to put that split pin through there and see that it goes through the side here. We now need to put on the real bundle. Now one thing I haven't put on 
over here are the springs, the upper springs for the vertical payout fingers. Okay, and the reason I haven't put those on is because if I do, they'll be pushed forward and sometimes get in the way of putting the real bundle in. So I'm going to leave the springs off so they're easily easy to push back. This is another thing that gets in the way. This is the lever here that stops the reels from spinning backwards when you first kick the reels round at the start of play. So um, that needs to be out of the way. Now on this particular one, they're all different models. Uh, this one has a little movable lever here. So I'm just going to move that out of the way around there. So it's easy to push that back. Now the spindle itself that goes through the reel bundle um, does not need any oil on there. If you clean this up with some fine um, wire wool, it should be nice and smooth, no ridges or anything on there, and just wipe it with a clean cloth. Okay. If it's machined well and not bent in any way, that should allow the reels to spin smoothly. If you really do need to put lubrication on there, then uh, avoid 3-in-1 oil. It's a little bit too thick, the viscosity. Uh, probably uh, sewing machine oil would be fine. The other thing is, on the real bundle, uh, cleaning this out here. Again, avoid oil. Uh, you want to spray WD-40 on there, not for lubrication, but just to clean it. And what I tend to do is put this down, put a piece of rag at the bottom, squirt in the top here some WD-40, let it soak for a while to get all the debris out. And if you've got a pipe cleaner, you can put it down there and just clean it gently. You don't want to damage the inside of this here. Just one thing I want to talk about when putting this in, make sure this little finger here, and you can see that, that has to go forward. You don't want it pushed behind. So make sure that that is forward as you drop the real bundle in. Okay, so that's in. Now, a couple of things I just want to mention. Sometimes this central rod will have a thread on one end, so that goes in first and it screws in at the other end. If you've got one like this that just pushes in, this hasn't got any thread, be careful on pushing it too far through because it comes out the other side. And if it sticks out too far, it causes problems with the coin lever here that skims off the overflow coins. You've then got a couple of screws here. You've got one on this end and one on the other end just to pinch it down. Now you don't want to tighten this up too tight. You see some people screw it too tight it just needs to be pinched up. So moment of truth, uh, we haven't run this yet, it's been rebuilt and I just want to see if the kicker works and all the mechanisms since we rebuilt it. We are going to put our brakes into position. Now, with the brakes, you have to feed this arm through the reels. Now, they have got some play in them, so you can separate the reels with your hands like that. You're not going to do damage. So, I'm just going to push it through. Here's the spring that clips onto the rear of the machine. That keeps the tension on the brake arm. And push that through. It's a little bit fiddly, but you should get it through there. Okay. All three brakes are pushed between the reels. Now it's at this point that you'll be able to see when the reels spin, sometimes the arms of the brakes rub against the rims. It's not a problem, uh, you just have to bend these out of the way, as long as it's not half an inch that you've got to bend it. Now we need to hook the springs on, and the springs here, the first one's easy because I can reach it, it hooks onto 
this bit here. Okay, and that will just put a bit of tension on there so you can see the brake will lock in. All three springs are in position. Gonna run it up again just to check the timing. Okay, now you'll notice that they took quite a while for the brakes to kick in. Now to adjust the timing of the brakes, you need to bend this lever down here. Now, okay, so what I've done, I've, I've bent the lever attached to the timing bar, and I've also adjusted the fins on the clock neck. Now the fins have been bent inwards to speed up the turning of that. So let's just try this again. The vertical payout lever springs are now on. Now when you're replacing these, you should use the proper tension ones. Uh, two things, you don't want them too tight because it will put a strain on when you're pulling the mechanism to pull these back. Secondly, if they're too tight, when they come inwards, they can sometimes cause a bounce, which knocks the horizontal fingers on a bounce and it gives a wrong payout. So try and get the right tension on there. You also don't want them too long. If they're too long, they won't work. In fact, a common payout problem is where people have stretched these springs too long uh, and there's not enough power or energy in the spring to do the final travel through the payout discs. So getting those right, it's a, it's a cause of a lot of the payout problems. So always check those on there. I'm just going to put the tube on. When I put this on, the lever that skims the overflow of coins off must go through the little hole in here. So the payout tube is on. So we're going to test this out, check the payouts on some of the symbols. So we're going to fire this up. I then just put a screwdriver to stop the clock from winding down. That means I can freely rotate the reels. And I'm gonna try a high payout, the three bells. So I've got three bells here. I'm gonna line them up. Now I know that when this is in the cabinet, it lines up with the top of this chute here. So that should be just about right on there, we'll soon find out, pull this out, let it wind down, and I'm hoping to see a bunch of slides go, and there they are. All of the slides have gone apart from the top one. Okay, so that works fine. I can also see here that the finger's gone in and the spring hasn't flown off. Sometimes if the spring's too loose, it does fly off. So that works fine. Let's crank this up again. And I'm going to go through all the other symbols on there in the same way and watch that the slides pay out. I can then fill up with some coins and make sure everything pays out right. But there's the part two of the total rebuild. We only had a couple of things to do, the real bundle and of course the brake arms in position.